Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have some fun fall beach projects for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell if you'd like to be notified when I post, and a thumbs up is always appreciated. Okay, who says that fall and the beach don't go together? Not me. All right, let's get to it. I got this little fall decoration sign kit from the Target Dollar Spot. I think they're $3. They come with all these cool little um, wood sticker pieces and a great sign. It's got hangers on the back and it's made out of a really nice wood. It's pretty sturdy. It's a lot better than what you're going to probably find at the Dollar Tree. And so for $3 with everything that was included, I think that's a pretty good deal. What I'm going to do is paint the back of it and make it a sign. So I'm just using some of this painter's tape from the Dollar Tree and I am just taping off um, the inside of the frame so that I don't get it all mucky when I go to paint the back of my sign. And I thought I would do a fun sign that I can sit on my shelf, um, something that's gonna have to do with fall and the beach and I was thinking I want to do it like in a pretty beach color blue. So this is my favorite color. You know that. The Agave by Wa Chalk Paint by Waverly. But I'm just going to add a little bit. I think that's pool to it. And just lighten it up just a little bit to make it a little bit more of a lighter color of blue. And I am just going to simply paint the back of the sign. Now this came with like some great like pumpkin and gourds and like a hello fall and I'm actually going to use that hello fall um, wood decal later on in another project and I'm sure I will use all of those for sure they're really cute. So I got one coat of that chalk paint on there and just drying that with my heat gun. What I'm going to plan to do is see that little um, wood leaf there. That is like one of the wood leaf ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I want to attach that to the sign and then I want to use like my Cricut to cut a message for the sign. But first I, I want to do something with this leaf. So I'm just going to fill the little ornament hole with a little bit of spackle. And if you have a trick for that, I would really appreciate if you comment below. Every single time I do that and paint over it, you can still see it. And then I will speckle over it again and paint it and you can still see it. Does anybody have a trick on how you can hide those without being able to see it? I know there must be one. Okay, so I painted it ivory um, chalk paint by Waverly. And then I want to go in with some of this antique wax by Waverly and just distress all of those beautiful edges on that leaf just to give a light distress. And then I'm gonna kinda do a little bit all over, but I'm gonna wipe most of that off there with my baby wipe because I want it to be like an ivory color, but I do want it to look um, nice and distressed. You know me, I like to distress everything. And I love using those little chunky brushes there from the Dollar Tree, they work great for that. And this is what I mean, I'm filling, <laughs> I'm filling that hole in again and um, painting over it and you can still kind of see it. I don't know if there's a way to totally get rid of it. And okay, this is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the painter's tape off of our sign. And I'm just gonna leave the frame in that natural color. I think it's really pretty. I think it's really beachy. I want all these projects to go on my um, bookcase I have between my living room and kitchen. I like to use that like really as a seasonal display. And I think this will be perfect for the second shelf. It's not too tall. So my plan is to put the leaf up in the corner like that, but first we're gonna use some of that Dollar Tree vinyl and in the color of white, and it's really hard to weed, <laughs> the white um, vinyl from the Dollar Tree, but I am using my little bright pad there, and that really helped a lot. I had to dim the lights there so I could see, but if you turn that up all the way, it really helps. I really like my new little toy, and when you um, have like a cursive font like that, there's a lot of weeding <laughs> in between all of those letters. And this font is Hello on the Cricut Design Space if you want to recreate it. And it says the leaves are falling and the beach is calling. I thought that was really fun. And I am just getting those all weeded. 
And I am just putting my little vinyl scraps into a little vinyl scrap holder. And it's really great because it's got the little slits on the side that will clean off your little Cricut weeder. And I picked that up on Amazon. I will post a link below if you would like one of those. It's got a little suction cup on the bottom and it's pretty big. It holds quite a bit and it works really well. I'm always looking for things that's gonna make um, my Cricut and my vinyl easier. And that's one of those things. Okay, I'm gonna trim that up a little bit and I'm gonna use some of this paper transfer paper. I get this on Amazon as well and I will post a link below for that as well. It is fantastic. Transfer paper is so easy and I like it way better than the clear kind. I'm just gonna kinda line up what's gonna fit around that leaf and then I'm gonna use my little Cricut scraper and scrape that vinyl down. And when I pull the paper off, I like to fold it as flat as I can and it really helps keep everything down. But this Cricut vinyl from the Dollar Tree is actually pretty darn good. And so my plan is to put the leaf on there kind of like that. So I'm just gonna attach it with a little bit of hot glue. And I want it to look like, you know, like a leaf that's falling. And I think that looks pretty good what I'm going for. Then I decide, I wanna seal those letters. So I'm just using some matte Mod Podge and I'm just going over the vinyl. I kinda wish I would've done this before I put the leaf on there, but it's matte and the chalk paint is matte, so it's all gonna blend in once it gets dry. And I'm just gonna speed that up with my heat gun. And this isn't necessary, but it always makes me feel better, make, makes the sign a little bit more permanent. And then I don't have to worry about that vinyl coming up. And then I decide that I wanted to stress it. Now I totally should have done this before I put the leaf on there because I kind of had to go all around it. But I'm just using one of those chunky brushes going all over in one direction and then I'm um, using a baby wipe to take off the excess. Around the leaf area was a little challenging because <laughs> the leaf was totally in my way, but I made it work. And I love to distress this color of blue. I think it's very coastal and very beachy. And I'm just distressing it until I get it to a point that I really like it and that it looks like it's really evenly di distressed. And I like that. Now, I was thinking that it needed something else. And I couldn't decide what it needed, but first I'm gonna try to make a stand. It's got this frame, but it really won't stand up on its own. So I'm just gonna hot glue one of these giant jingle blocks to the back. You can use whatever you've got, just something to make it stand up. And then I thought, I think it actually needs like a real leaf on the back. So I'm gonna use one of these blue fall leaves from the Dollar Tree and just kind of attach it on top of my wood leaf. They're the same kind of leaf and it's gonna give it like more of a 3D vibe and it's gonna give some texture to the sign. And it was exactly what my sign was missing. So I just used a little bit of hot glue just to put that down. And then I'm just gonna use a little raffia bow that I took off of another project from the Dollar Tree and just glue that onto the top of the leaf and that looks like way more finished and I love how that project turned out. What do you think? I love that saying. Okay, up next, I found this great a metal pumpkin at the Dollar Tree. It says gather and I love the blue and white plaid. I thought that was very beachy. I'm just gonna pop off the little raffia bow and take off the chain that was on the top and I am gonna make this into a sign. So I'm gonna use, it's a Halloween sign, but it totally doesn't have to be, and some leftover burlap that I cut off the back of one of these bags from the Dollar Tree, and I have some scraps. And so I'm gonna have to cut two pieces of the burlap to cover the sign, but that's fine. I don't think you'll be able to tell. And I like to use all of my craft materials for sure. So I'm kind of measuring. Once you get it lined up, you can kind of go with the line of the burlap to make sure that you're cutting a straight line. And I like to pull off the first piece um, to give it a slightly frayed appearance. And I'm not even gonna bother painting this sign because you're not gonna be able to see that writing through it because I'm gonna put that pumpkin on top of it. 
and make a shelf sitter sign. And it's also got like the orange um, outline around the edges, which is slightly visible, but I kind of like it. I think it kind of goes with the Halloween fall vibe. So I'm measuring that second piece of scrap and I'm always looking for ways to get material and wood from the Dollar Tree. So this was a fun way to get some burlap from the Dollar Tree in a bigger size. So my plan is just to attach that like that. And then I think that pumpkin will cover all the design on there. So it don't, totally doesn't matter what kind of sign you put it on. But I liked this size because the pumpkin will slightly um, hang off the edges. And I kind of like that effect. So I'm just going to attach the burlap to the sign with just a little bit of hot glue. Nothing fancy. Just try not to burn yourself. And I'm going to slightly overlap the second one. Um, so that you won't see any of the sign underneath of it. And just attach that with hot glue as well. And I really like using burlap on signs. I think it gives it really fun texture and I think it looks really coastal. And I like how that turned out. And I'm just trimming it to make sure that it is even. And trying to make sure that it's stuck down and I'm just going to clean up any hot glue mess that came out of the top there and that is my plan now I don't really want it to say gather I wanted to say something else and so I got some of these stickers from the Dollar Tree and I thought I could make it say whatever I want but first I'm gonna have to paint over that where it says gather so I'm just gonna use some ivory chalk paint by Waverly and just paint that middle section because I really like the plaid on the side and I do want to keep that um, but I do want to change what it says so it's really kind of hard to tape off a curved area like that so I didn't really bother I'm just trying to be careful and then when I do mess up and paint too far over I'm just trying to clean that up with a baby wipe and it turned out pretty pretty good so I'm trying to make the edges look clean and then I'm just trying to get um, as much as that gather covered up with the ivory. And this chalk paint is great because it'll stick to anything, even metal like this. And this kind of reminds me of like um, one of the metal like steak pumpkins, but it's a little bit smaller. And I'm going over with another coat because you could still kind of read the word gather through there. And I want to replace that word, so I want it to be a blank slate. And again, just trying to clean up as I go and try to keep that pretty uniform. And once I have that middle part of the pumpkin all white or ivory, I'm going to put a word on there with my little stickers. And they are outlined in blue, but they also have like some red foil um, design on those letters. And I don't really like that. So I, I will end up painting those as well. But I really like the letters. They're exactly the right size that I needed for this project. And I'm going to spell out the word peach, of course. <laughs> And so I'm trying to find the middle and just, I'm not really putting the stickers down. I'm just kind of sitting them there because I need to figure out if they're going to fit. And that direction was a little tight. So I'm kind of seeing if I have more room to move down a little bit. And I do. So then I'm just going to move them down slightly and then I can stick those down. And I'm just using the sticker. I'm not using any glue or anything like that. I think they're going to stay on there. And perfect fit beach. Then I'm like, I don't really like that red foil on there. So I'm just going to go in there and start distressing with some of that ivory chalk paint and try to cover up the red design that was on the letters. And I kind of want it to look like, you know, um, that the word was molded into the sign or that it was like wood and that it's carved. And so that's what I was kind of going for. So I'm just distressing all over with the ivory. And 
end up just kind of getting that like I want it. I kind of want it to look um, raised, but I want you to be able to see it a little bit. So I'm gonna go in and distress the whole piece with a little bit of that Antique Wax by Waverly and wipe off the excess with um, a um, baby wipe. You really can't tell too much that I did that in the final project though. I think it wipes off the metal really easily. It sticks to the chalk paint a little bit better. But maybe you can see a little bit of distress around the edges. And then it was too dark, I thought, in the middle. So anytime you're distressing, if you go back in with your original color and that was the ivory, you can um, fix any um, mistakes. So I'm trying to decide if you, I really want you to be able to read beach or if I kind of just want it to look like an embossed effect. And I can't decide. Then I decide, oh yeah, I totally want it more blue. So I'm gonna go in and distress the letters and kind of a little bit all over with that agave color. just to bring it out a little bit more. And going back in with the ivory on the distress on that part of the pumpkin. And just fool with it until you get it like you like it. And then my plan is to attach it to that little sign. Um, I wanted to do something with the stem, so the easiest way to take care of a little stem like this is just to wrap it with some of this jute twine from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to tie it around the circle that was on the top and just wrap it around until it is all covered. Easy peasy. Cut off the end and just um, hot glue that into the back. Now, since it is metal and it's arched, it doesn't really come into contact with my sign. So I'm using some of those little mini Jenga sticks from the Dollar Tree and gluing two of those on the back and then putting hot glue on that and hot glue on both of the sides and gluing that to my little burlap sign. And I wanna make sure that it can sit up so that the bottom is flush, but I kinda of like that the sides hang off. Now be careful when you're hot gluing these metal because it gets really hot. So I was trying to decide, I thought it needed maybe something else. And so I decided to reattach that raffia bow that was on there before and perfect size. And just attach that with a little bit of hot glue. Then I decided that I couldn't really read the letters enough. I wanted them to be a little bit more blue. So I'm just using a small brush to go in and do a really sloppy, like um, weathered little paint job on those letters. And I'm glad I did. It looks way better like this. And sometimes these projects just evolve. and <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, I'm not totally happy with that. And that was the final touch that I thought that it needed. Super cute and easy. Total cost like $2, right? Maybe three, two to three. <laughs> okay, up next, check out these adorable little pumpkins that I found at Dollar Tree. They're really cute. The only problem is, is that they're covered in glitter. <laughs> so of course I can't have that. I'm just taking off the little raffia bows that are on all of the pumpkins and then cutting some wood um, contact paper. Doesn't matter what it is, just something to cover the glitter. And I am just gonna have those be the back of my little pumpkins. And these are such a cute shape and they're like the perfect size. Um, I think I grabbed five of these. They have all, di all different colors. Um, I kind of like the colors these are, but I'm gonna change them up a little bit to kind of go more with my decor. And I just cut a square and put it on there. It's a little too big. And then I use my sanding block from the Dollar Tree to go around and give me a perfect cut for the back of my little pumpkins. And this step's totally not necessary. 
Um, but I love to have the back of my projects finished. And I'm gonna do the same thing on pumpkin number two and pumpkin number three. That sanding block I was using was, I think, <laughs> past its prime. It was kind of falling apart on me. And it's such an easy way um, to get this on here and make it the perfect size. And you don't have to worry about an X-Acto knife or cutting it to size and getting it on there straight. Just put it on there a little too big and scuff off the back. And these actually look kind of cool with that wood on there, don't they? <laughs> I'm like, you could kind of use it like this if you wanted to. Now, my plan for these cute little pumpkins um, I want to do um, a blue and an ivory and an orange pumpkin, and I would like them to have sea creatures on them. So that is the plan, but first I got to get these stickers off the back. So I'm just going to use my heat gun. It really helps to get the stickers off, but you can always use um, Goo Gun or whatever you've got, whatever method you choose. And I'm using that with one of those scrapers from the Dollar Tree to scrape that off. And honestly, you wouldn't even have to paint these. They're really pretty colors. I wanted mine to be more of the blue color than the mint green to kind of go with um, the other projects that I'm making for the shelf. And so I'm gonna lighten um, the agave like I did before by adding a little bit of pool to kind of get that same color that I had for the first sign that we made. And I, it's really easy. I'm kind of going with the closest color. So this was the closest color. And I was kind of deciding whether I wanted to leave it two-toned. I do go back and um, end up painting the sides. And using my heat gun and my little scraper, look how easy that was. There is a little bit of damage um, using that scraper, but since I am going to paint over it, I think it's going to be okay. And this one's like a peachy color. Um, I'm gonna make this one ivory. This was the lightest color one I had. And I really like um, the light blue pumpkin, the ivory, and the light orange pumpkins. I love that vibe. It so goes with like the coastal farmhouse decor I have in my house. And I am giving that a dry. You can kind of see the color through the ivory one, so it is requiring more than one coat of the ivory chalk paint. I'm trying to keep the stems relatively um, clean, but I'm probably gonna cover them anyway, so it doesn't matter. And pumpkin number three, I'm just removing its tag. And this was already kind of a pretty color. Now I'm gonna go in with um, the chalk paint by Waverly in the color of pumpkin for this one. And it's quite a bit brighter than was on the original. Um, and I kind of like the original color better. So I do end up changing the shade of orange here in just a sec. But this is what we're starting with. We have the blue, the white, and the orange. Now, what I want to do is make um, stencils on my Cricut using stencil paper and um, to put the sea creature images on there. And I'm just gonna use sea creature images off of Cricut Design Space. I finally activated my free trial. I've had my Cricut since Christmas and um, I forgot to cancel it, of course, and they charged me for it. And I was like, oh no, if I'm paying for this, I gotta start using it. Um, I already have Canva Pro, which I really prefer, but I did, was able to find some cute ocean um, images on Cricut Design Space. So maybe I will give it a chance. What do you guys think? Are you guys subscribed to your um, Cricut Design Space? And that's when I decide I wanted to go in and paint the sides. Now, this is when I was like, that orange is just too bright. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that pumpkin color and add some ivory just to lighten that up because I kind of liked the original shade more. I think it goes with that light, softer blue a little bit better. And I'm just mixing it. I got these little trays at the Target Dollar Spot. I think they were four for a dollar, so they're like a quarter a piece. And they are great for um, little um, paint containers because they have sides, they're easy to clean up. And if you forget to clean them up, they only cost a quarter, so it's no great loss. 
So I went over all the edges and the front with that color and I like that color better. I think that's gonna work. And I just love these pumpkins. You know, I've made some pumpkins with some scrap wood and um, the foam pumpkins and anything can really be a pumpkin if you decorate it right. And so I really love these, these are so easy. So this is um, the Cricut um, stencil vinyl that I use. I'm trying to find the words and I am trying to weed it. I get this stuff off of Amazon. It's a really good stencil vinyl. It doesn't damage your paint. It stays down really well and you get like a huge roll of it. And I decided my first one was easy. That was the sand dollar and that was just the straight image from Cricut Design Space. And so is this one. This one is going to be a starfish. Now the problem with this is that this had dots on it and the dots were really small. They were so small that they were really hard to weed out and like leave stuck down for my stencil. And so I am really trying though. <laughs> I get through a couple and then I'm like, this is too much work. I can always add the little spots on. A starfish is really easy to paint. And so I was like, ah, forget it. Then I had to remove the ones that I painstakingly left on there. <laughs> and I just have the shape, of, the shape of the starfish with a little dot in the middle. Now this third image for our pumpkins is going to be a sea turtle. Now the sea turtle is really kind of an intricate I found the um, kind of the simplest one I could find on Cricut Design Space. And then what I did is I went in and used the contour button to take off all the ones that were little tiny dots because there were little tiny dots all over this one too. That way they didn't even cut out and that made that process easier. And I'm just making sure the little lines are all stuck down where they should be. Now, if you've never used stencils before from the Cricut, they're super easy. You just um, attach them to whatever you wanna paint um, with transfer paper, just like you would with vinyl. And I'm using that paper transfer paper again and peeling that off. And the reason you have to do that is to keep everything in place. Now I want my little sea turtle to be like swimming off to the side. I don't want him straight up and down. So I kind of just line him up and put this stencil on there. I'm going to do that one on the blue one. And then I'm just going to use some painter's tape um, to go around any exposed parts of the pumpkin because I know how I am and I will mess that up if I don't do that. So I decided I was going to do my starfish on the ivory one. Sometimes it can be a little challenging to get the back off, but the Cricut weeder there always kind of helps. And I'm using the other pumpkin to make sure that I'm getting them lined up fairly even. And peeling off that transfer paper. And this stuff is so good that you can even reuse it. And the sand dollar pattern was pretty simple. And that is gonna go on our orange pumpkin. And again, I'm using the other pumpkin to help me line them up. I don't want them to be all crazy different. Now, what my plan is on these is to try to do a um, wood technique. Um, I want them to look um, like they were wood and then they were painted around it in a design. I don't know if that makes sense, but you'll see here just in a minute but I don't want it to be dark, dark, dark. So the first step is I'm going over the stencils with ivory chalk paint. I have found when I use antique wax over the ivory, it gives me a softer wood vibe. And so I'm going over all of them, even the ivory one, because I thought it would even help seal the stencil down. So once I get that on all of them, I'm using my heat gun to dry. And I thought this one needed another coat and I'm just making sure they have even coverage. Now what I'm going to do is use um, Antique Wax by Waverly. And if I use a foam brush and drag that across that stencil, it really gives me like um, a wood grain effect. I did this on my pumpkin patch sign. It turned out really cute. So I thought I would try it again. So I'm making sure those are really good and dry with my heat gun. 
and um because i don't want them to smear when i go and all i do is get a little bit of antique wax on there and just work in one direction and i kind of want my strokes to be full top to bottom and go over that stencil on all three of them all in the same direction and you can kind of see already how it kind of looks like wood you can really see once um, i pull the stencils off now, I think it was important to seal it with the ivory chalk paint first, too, because, you know, the antique wax is a little thin. I don't want that to bleed out underneath my stencil at all. So I am using my heat gun. This stuff dries pretty fast, and it is time to take off the stencils and see what we have. So this one's going to be the starfish. And then when you use a stencil, you just have to weed off the vinyl that's still on there. This one only had that one piece. And so I was like, oh, I'll use a paint pen to do the dots. But my paint pen was too large. So the only thing I could find small enough was just one of these skewers from the Dollar Tree. And so I just used that um, and dot, dot, dot the little um, dots back on my starfish. Uh, I think four of them on each of its little legs. Or rays, I guess is what they're called. And that ended up working well. I mean, I could not even find a paintbrush small enough because they're like such tiny dots. That's why I was having such trouble weeding it too, for sure. So it's kind of forgiving. If you mess up a little bit, you can go in and fix it. And there is our little starfish. I really like um, how this turned out. It was exactly the effect I was going for. And I love how I was able to bring um, some sea creatures into Halloween or fall. So here is the a blue one. And now this one was intricate. So I am going to need to weed it out. So I'm gonna have lots of vinyl I'm bringing out of here. And you can kind of see where all your vinyl is because you can see the kind of cut lines around it and I'm just going to carefully go in and weed out all of the vinyl that is still on there until we have a beautiful sea turtle. Sea turtles are my favorite so I was glad I was able to incorporate that for sure. I'm going to display these on a shelf with I think my whale um, and I think that that will um, look really cute together. And we have a sea turtle. There was a tiny bit, a tiny area where the white did bleed out a little bit. So I was just touching that up. I actually did not distress these pieces. I thought about it and then I didn't want to do it. And then I thought about it and I didn't want to do it. I like how they turned out, but I think they would be really cute distressed as well. Now we have all three and it's time to do something with the stems. Um, the stems had glue left over on it and um, a little bit of paint and so I just decided to wrap them just with this little um, jute twine from the Dollar Tree until they're completely covered. Um, I wanted to use that like larger rope but it was way too big. Totally wasn't going to work and just use a little bit of hot glue to secure that down and I'm going to do some hot glue to start this one and the same thing easy peasy. And I just want to dress these up a little bit. The image on there is um, kind of enough. Um, I got these really cute risers from the Target Dollar Spot the other day. So I thought I would use one of those with my display with these. Getting that. some that This one did not want to stay on too well. So I had to use a little bit more hot glue than I did on the first and the third one. But I finally got it to stay. And I'm just gonna leave the very top, the exposed wood. It looks fine like that. And whenever you're doing the same project over and over again, I find it works better just to kind of do the same step to all of them at the same time. That way you can be working on one thing at a time. And we have three wrapped stems. Now I was trying to think it needs more. It needs something decorative for the top. And so first I'm gonna go in and um, burn off any excess little um, strings. 
totally not necessary, but I like to do that. I think it gives it a finished touch. Then I was thinking about using like some of these raffia bows I have left over, and then I was like, eh. Drink some Coke Zero, ponder it. What do they need? And um, then I was like, just something really simple. So I'm just gonna use some twine. First, I was just gonna do a little bow and put on there. But then I was like, you know, no, I will just tie it around there and then tie a bow. Um, just something super simple. And then you'll see I have a bunch of little seashells there. I went through my seashells and found some really tiny ones. And I'm gonna use those to decorate the top of these. And it's just gonna be another little coastal touch for our little pumpkins. And I'm just doing a simple bow, trying to get it kind of even, and then just cutting off the strings if they are a little too long. And didn't these turn out cute? I really love these pumpkins. I had this picture in my head. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to bring it to reality, but I think I totally did. Okay, so the last step is just to attach these little shells. I'm gonna use like one shell on each one. So I'm just kind of playing around with them and seeing which ones I like the best on which pumpkin and then just using a little bit of hot glue just to attach them. Just a really easy way to decorate the top of your coastal pumpkin. Okay, this project is complete. We have three beach fall projects and we have two more left to go. Blue, white, orange. Okay, this project, oh my gosh. I thought it was gonna be a little basic, but it turned out so cute. I'm just using one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. Um, what are the dimensions on this? It's a lot bigger than the first sign I worked with. Um, hmm. Maybe like eight by eight or seven by seven. And I'm using some of this um, adhesive wallpaper. Only one of my Dollar Trees has this, but they have it in all different kinds. It's so pretty. And all it is is a peel and stick wallpaper. And it's perfect to make a sign. Cause what it is, is it's gonna match. That original sign was like a white shiplap. And so it's still like that on the side. So I don't even have to worry about the sides. I can just peel off this wallpaper and cover up that welcome to our wedding. Look how easy that is. Now you could kind of still read the writing through there. If I was going to be able to see that, I would have painted that ivory first so that you wouldn't have been able to see the message through. But I'm gonna put that fall leaf on here, that wood leaf that I got at the Dollar Tree. And so what I'm doing now is just sanding up around the edges to make sure that I got it on there perfect and that it is cut to size and it's not hanging off at all. And I love it. Okay, so my plan is to attach the leaf like that to my sign and it is a hanging sign. So I'm just cutting off the string from our maple leaf and then it's got two holes left from that that I don't need so I am using some spackle from the Dollar Tree and just filling those in. And this project kind of evolved. I was thinking I wanted like beachy white which is the background. I was wanting like some blues and some browns on my leaf and um, so I want the back leaf to be um, blue. So this is that agave that I mixed with a little bit of pool. My leftover paint, I had just enough to finish this project. And I'm just having to use a little tiny brush to get the design here on the inside because I don't really wanna take this apart. I want it to be a multi-dimensional sign like this. So I just carefully went in there and then I am using a foam brush um, around the edges to make my back leaf this pretty color of beachy blue and then I'm going in there with my little brush too to get it in close to that top leaf and I am getting a little bit of paint on there but I don't think you're going to be able to tell I'm trying to do it as cleanly as possible that would be really hard to tape that off so I'm trying to make sure that you can't see like any like raw wood I really want this back leaf to look um blue. 
So once I get that on there, I am just drying that real quick. And what I'm gonna do is um, make the top leaf like um, look like wood. So I'm gonna end up using some Antique Wax by Waverly um, to do that. But first I was a little worried about the blue paint that I did get on that sign. So I'm just kind of going over that with some of this ivory chalk paint to brighten that up before I go in and stain that. So I'm kind of going to do the same thing that I did on the pumpkins where I do the ivory and then I'm going to do the antique wax over the top of it to make it look like wood. And I'm not worried about the paint that I'm getting on the sides there because I'm just going to go ahead and use that to distress. So I'm just using a baby wipe and going all around and blending that in with my blue and it gave me a nice distressed leaf. And I actually added more because I needed a little bit more distressing. <laughs> and I got my primer for my top leaf done and my distressing done all like there in one step. And I'm just trying to touch up here and there. I, I even tried to distress the inside. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> And I really love that color of blue on the leaf. I think it looks so coastal. So we're ready for the antique wax. And I'm just gonna drag that in one direction and paint that on there, trying to be as clean as possible. If I distress the back leaf, it's no big deal, but I wanna make sure that this front leaf looks like stained wood. So I'm carefully going all over and just making sure that I am working in one direction to give me that pretty wood grain. And then going in with my baby wipe again to kind of distress with any that got on my blue leaf. When you distress projects, they are so forgiving. <laughs> and touching that up all around. And I really love that wood leaf on top of the blue leaf. I think that looks really fun. And kind of wiping off the excess stain. A little bit too much came off. And so I will have to touch that up here in just a second. And I'm just going to go over it again to fill up any spaces that I took off too much of the stain. And just touching up here and there until I think it looks perfect. And sometimes you can mess with these projects too much. <laughs> All right, next step is I thought it would be fun to wrap the stem of the leaf in a little bit of this twine. I think it gives everything um, a finished look and I think it definitely goes with the coastal um, vibe for fall. So I just used a little bit of hot glue and then just simply wrapping that twine all the way around my little maple leaf stem. Now I was trying to think how I can make this more coastal. I think the twine makes it more coastal. And I'm thinking about adding maybe some seashells to this sign as well. So I make sure I get it all covered and then I'm just gonna hot glue off the end and trim it. And I kind of want it to be at an angle when I put it on my little sign, kind of like that. I think that looks kind of cool. And this is when I started thinking about shells. How can I put shells on here? And I'm just kind of playing around, seeing if I want to use big ones, if I want to use small ones. Just going through my little shell stash. My husband was laughing at me because um, I was getting low on shells that I used to craft with. So I bought some on Amazon and he's like, you could have just went to the beach. And I'm like, oh, but look how pretty they are. <laughs> it 
the bees right. I probably could have just went to the beach. <laughs> but Amazon's next day, right? So I'm just going to attach my maple leaf to my sign now. I'm trying to put hot glue only where it's not going to be overlapping the edges and securing that to our sign. Now, these signs are not very sturdy. They're nice size, but they're real lightweight. So I will have to do something to make it stand up. And I was thinking three little shells was the perfect little addition. And they kind of look like, you know, acorns <laughs> on my little fall sign. But instead, they're little seashells. And I'm just going to simply attach those to our sign with a little bit of hot glue. And after this, I really thought I was done, but then I was like looking at it. I'm like, it's beautiful, but it needs something else. What does it need? And then I found something perfect to finish this project. I thought um, that first sign, you know, that I got the target sign had the little wood cutouts. They had like pumpkins they had hello fall and so i am gonna try to use that hello fall on here and you know your girl loves distressing so i'm just going over with my chunky brush to go around the edges just to kind of give it one last little distress i don't think you can distress too much <laughs> And after that, I really am done painting this leaf, I swear. All right, there's the Hello Fall. And the really cool thing about these wood cutouts is they are stickers. They're really thick, they're really nice. It's a perfect cut. And I'm just peeling off the back of my sticker and I'm just gonna use that to attach it to my wood leaf. Easy peasy. And I think this was the perfect final touch to the sign. What do you think? I think this is my favorite project. I really love how it turned out. It's so coastal and so fall. And so again, I was saying this is probably not gonna stand up and nope, it won't. So I'm just gonna use um, some of these giant Jenga blocks that I got at Five Below just to put them inside um, the bottom of the frame to weigh it down. And you can use whatever you want. You could even use the mini Jenga blocks for this too. You'll just have to probably use quite a few of them because you need the weight. I'm kind of playing around with it. I don't really want it to be sticking out. And so I'm just gonna use hot glue to attach that kind of in the center. And I think I'm gonna need two of them for the weight to make sure that this sign doesn't tip over because it's a little top heavy with um, all the stuff that attached to the front of it too. And that is the final step in this fall DIY. And I have one more for you. There it is, hello fall. Okay, I got this wood tray at the Target Dollar Spot this summer for $5, I think. You've probably seen me use it in other DIYs. I had it covered with um, plastic, and um, the problem with that is it did leave a little hot glue around the edges, so I don't really want to paint the whole tray because I'm going to plan to cover up the hot glue that is around the edges. But I thought I would try to do like just a really abstract beach um, scene on my tray. I've done this before with a painting in my living room where I just did all different kinds of shades of tan and blue and try to make it look like the beach. And so that's what I'm going for. I've brought out all of my blue shades that I can find in my chalk paints. Um, and I am even using a little black acrylic to darken them. I think I have pool, lagoon, agave. I was trying to find any color of blue that I could find. I used that lighter um, blue color on the top to kind of represent the sky. And basically, you just do different color stripes of blue. They're really easy. I really think anybody can do this painting. I am definitely not an artist at all. Um, because when you look at the beach, 
Um, it's just all these different like shades of blue. The further you look out, the blue changes. At least that is how the beach is here where I live in Florida. And so I kind of did um, this pretty lagoon color here for the top of my ocean to try to give me like a little bit of separation between that and the sky. And I am just lightening and darkening these blues as I go um, to get like the perfect shades because I only had like three colors of the blue, um, but I actually wanted more different shades of blue. So I thought that top one was a little light, so I did add um, some more of the lagoon to that color. And I did not paint um, that design that was on there before. And so I do have to do quite a few coats um, of chalk paint to cover up the writing because I don't want that to show through. And you can just play with this. You can kind of just keep going and going and going and <laughs> um, never be happy or you can kind of finally say, hey, I'm done painting. But I thought this would be really fun to stand this tray up on my display with a fun beach scene um, to go with my coastal fall decor. So you can see how many different colors of blue and even that agave doesn't even really look blue. It kind of looks more green. And then I'm going to go in with a chunky brush to kind of start blending between wet layers and it will blend like one of those blues into the next one. And I just keep playing with it and playing with it until I think it kind of looks like the ocean. <laughs> and so honestly, all you have to do is to be able to kind of paint semi straight lines and they don't even have to be straight. And you could even do this, like I could have done it at an angle and it gave me like an angle beach scene. I was trying to decide if I wanted to leave um, the wood on the bottom for the sand. Um, I end up thinking that I do want it to look like a finished painting. And so I do end up painting the wood part um, in a sand color as well. So I'm speeding up the drying on that with the heat gun. And you can kind of see the wood grain coming through a little bit and the writing. And so I just keep doing um, a couple extra coats of color until you can't see that anymore. I really want it to look clean. I don't want you to be able to read barbecue through here. And you can do this with any wood tray. I think Target sells like a plain wood tray in their crafting section now. Um, and I think you can probably get a tray anywhere. You could get a thrift flip. You could already have a tray at your house. You could totally do this with. And it was a, it was just a kind of an idea I had, and I'm really glad I did it. I think it turned out really cool. And I am going in with that chunky brush and just kind of blending and blending between layers until I'm happy with it. I probably worked on it longer than I needed to. And this is when I decided that I wanted to paint the sand and I am using this color, I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it's called Cashew and it's a chalk paint by Waverly too. And painting in the area where the sand would be. And I'm trying to go as close as I can to the edges without getting it on the edges of my tray because I did not tape them off. I probably should have. And I'm not really worried about that black border that has the hot glue on it because I'm going to cover that up with some ribbon. Now, where like the ocean meets the sand, you have like a sea foam. So I thought I could kind of recreate that in an abstract way with just some ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush and give me like a thin little sea foam line. And you really don't have to worry about anything being straight. You could even curve it and try to get super fancy. Now I want this to last forever. So I'm using Mod Podge to try to seal it. My Mod Podge, ugh, shouldn't buy this big of a jar. It was kind of clumpy. So I'm picking out clumps as I go and being like, oh Lord. I probably used a little bit too much Mod Podge, but I got it sealed and that is good because I think it'll make it more durable 
and hopefully I'll be able to use it if I needed to, but it's so pretty. I don't think I really want to use it. I think I just want to look at it. <laughs> so I have it super wet with Mod Podge, but then it dried. Look how pretty. Okay, so I thought I would use some of this burlap ribbon. And this is the one with the white, like, mm, circle pattern, kind of. And I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to glue that down. And that's going to cover that black area. If I could have painted all the way to the edge and it was flat and I had it taped off, I wouldn't need to do this. But I think it added even more of a um, fun coastal feel with that burlap. I love these burlap ribbons at the Dollar Tree. They have several different ones. They have like a zigzag. I love them. I use them all the time. I always try to pick them up when I see them. So I'm just kind of guessing about how long, just kind of overlapping the corners. It doesn't really matter. And using three little spots of glue to secure that to my tray. And I could have used hot glue all along, but I did not want like hot glue like bleeding out everywhere and making more of a mess than it was already on there. So I'm just trying to be kind of frugal with my hot glue. And here is the right side of our sign. And I'm gonna kind of stand this up and then I thought I would add a few little fall touches to it. Nothing special, but I think it'll go with the other projects that we made today. And there is the last side, and that made a cute little frame to go inside my tray. And so I thought I would use like three of these white pumpkins, just pull them off the clips, and just some of these little miniature hay bales from the Dollar Tree. Okay, it's final reveal. Okay, the leaves are falling and the beach is calling. This was the first sign we made out of that sign from the Target Dollar Spot and some Dollar Tree Cricut vinyl. And I love it, it's so fun. Here is our little beach pumpkin with a little metal beach. Well, it wasn't beach before, the plaid pumpkin that we added the word beach to and attached it to a fun little burlap sign. And then next we made these cute little pumpkins. We have our sea turtle, our starfish, and our sand dollar. And I gave them like a wood stenciled look and I'm using one of those little risers that I got at Target Dollar Spot. They come through to a package and they're really cute just to prop one up a little bit higher in the back. It looks really good with my little whale. And then finally up top we have, we did our Hello Fall sign. I think it looks so fun and coastal with the blue and the wood and the seashells add that little extra touch and I love that Hello Fall cutout. And finally, here is our ocean tray. Look how pretty that is. It totally gives me the ocean feel. And I just stack some of those hay bales and use those pumpkins to finish that off. And this is what they all look like all together. I have three shelves here. I think all the projects work really well together. And I like to keep some of my coastal pieces like that whale in my holiday decor. I think it helps bring it out. What did you guys think about these projects today? Please comment below your favorite project and don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, bye.